Good morning, it's uh, Jeremy. It's Friday, March the 1st. Gorgeous day out there. Today I want to talk about uh, using GNU Radio uh, to build some tools I need for the looking at the uh, DSC uh, Channel 70 signals. So in the last couple of posts I've been looking at um, receiving uh, the DSC signals, simulating them in Psychos, and I've got a whole bunch of um, tools that I use in the Psychos math program. Um, the advantage of using GNU radio, of course, is that it interfaces with the RTL SDR and it works in real time, which is an advantage. Whereas Psychos is a math program, it has a lot of utilities and a lot of um, uh, functions, uh, but it's sort of after the fact, so you have to record the waveform as a wave file and read it in and do your math on that in, in that way. So what I thought I'd do then is build some tools then with the GNU radio. One of the tools I need is a uh, VCO. So there is a VCO block in um, GNU radio and it's set up with a sensitivity. So I've got it set up at the center frequency of the DS VF, DSC VHF signal, which is 1700 Hertz. The so sensitivity is radians per seconds per volt. So basically if I've got one volt coming in here, it'll go to 1700 Hertz. Now with two constants, a multipl multiplicative constant and an additive constant, you can um, set this up so when your data is one, the one will multiply by the constant and you'll add the, the, seven, the 0.764. So what that will do is what multiply, instead of one volt, it'll be 1.26, something like that. The details are in the uh, blog post, how you get those equations. And that'll take it up to 2100. And when it's a zero, a zero times a multiplic multiplicative constant, uh, has no no influence. It's just the 0.764 times this will give you the 1300. So that's basically how it works. Um, and I've got a random data sync. We'll talk about that in a minute um, to drive this thing. So if we um, uh, save this thing and let's look at it. Okay, so I'm going to stop this. So there's the data signal. Uh, so basically it's reflected by the voltage coming in, uh, the 1.2 volts will, will knock it up to 2100 and the 0.7 volts will knock it down to 1300 and you, you can clearly see when there's a 1 you get, um, you get the higher frequency and when, you, when there's a 0 you get the lower frequency so that's a nice clean output. I also built another circuit uh, to test the, um, the VCO. So basically, instead of a, a random data source, I've got a constant source. So I've deactivated the zero. So let's look at that. So with a constant one coming in, you should get 2100. So there you go down there is the spectrum analyzer and you can see it's 2100. So that, uh, that you can test your VCO in that way. And then finally, I've got a random uh, number generator. Um, you need... Um, if you use the random source, it's great. It gives you a random series of streams of zeros and ones. Unfortunately, they're just points. They're not really, they don't stay at one for the whole bit interval. So you have to do a bit of a kludging here. So I've, the best way to do this, I do this in Psychos by creating a script file, and then I create a structure and a dat file. So that's the easiest way to do it. So you could do the same thing in Python. Um, I just rushed and tried to put some blocks together that would do something similar. So let's just run this and we'll see how it works. What's coming out of here, like I say, is at the um, sample rate, streams of zeros and ones. We need to establish the bit rate of 1200 bits per second and we need to sample it. And the sample and hold is a bit quirky in uh, GNU radio. So let's look at that. So let's look at the data signal first. So there's my random data signal. Okay, so that's what I want. So that's nice and clean from zero to one. Let's look at um, signal two. So what's happening here is, I'm gonna expand this a bit. You're getting these um, bursts of data coming out of the um, uh, random data source. Now what happens is when the uh, square wave, I'm using the square wave as, as the trigger for the sample and hold. Uh, when the square wave becomes zero, it samples and holds. So that's the second part of the square wave there. That's the second part of the square wave. That's the second part of the square. But meanwhile, in between, you get all these zeros and ones coming in. So that, 
what I have to do to suppress. I don't want this stuff. I want these um, uh, these bits here. So what I do is I've got a second signal source here. I've delayed it by um, half a bit period or a full bit period is 2 pi. So half a bit period is pi. I've delayed it by pi. And this simple, the second sample and hold gets rid of all these extra bits we don't want. So basically at the end of the day, uh, the two sample and holds give you just the random data, which is what we want. And you can test to see um, one bit period is, uh, I think it's 833 nanoseconds or 0.8 milliseconds. So there's, let's say, 9.15. And that's... Uh, about 10, so that's about that's about 0.8 something um, uh, milliseconds in there. So that's the right bit period. So, anyways, then that's um, those are some tools we can use to build a VCO and then drive it uh, with various signals. Um, the three files here, VCO and VCO1 and random generator, I've got as a zip file uh, as a, a download on the blog post and the video.